What's up everyone? I'm Emmanuel with Financial Fitness, where here we talk about finances and fitness. And today we're going to be talking about 10 things to help you increase your savings. Alright, number one is a budget. Now, a lot of people think that if you have a budget or when you're talking about budgeting, they automatically think about they have to live on less or cutting things out or have less fun. When that's not exactly what a budget means. A budget is just a plan, like financial plan, on how to manage your money. It's like being a pirate looking for treasure without a treasure map. You're not gonna find the gold. When you don't have a budget, you tend to validate your purchases by looking at your bank account. You're saying, this Xbox costs $500. I have $560. I can afford this Xbox. When that's not true, if you have a budget and in your budget you have entertainment or shopping, well, in your, sh in your budget, shopping's only $450. This Xbox costs $500. Well, clearly you can't afford this Xbox for the month. Number two is you need to stop nickel and diming yourself. And when I say that, it's just like how you think nickels and dimes are a little bit of money, but nickels and dimes add up. So that Starbucks coffee that you bought, that candy bar that you bought, every time you go to McDonald's, yeah, you're ordering off the dollar menu, but you spent $5 at McDonald's, but you bought McDonald's five times this week. That's $25. On top of you bought Starbucks four times this week. That's another $20. Right now, you just spent $45, and you probably did both of those before 9 a.m. every day. Stop nickel and diming yourself. These nickel and dimes are like having leaks in your budget. And we're going to go back to the pirate reference. If you're a pirate on a ship and you have leaks in your ship, your ship will eventually sink. Number three, we mistake wants for needs. This happens to all of us all the time. We always feel like we need that new item. We need that new phone. We need that upgrade. We need a new car. We need whatever it is, right? We have to change that word with want, right? If you cannot validate to a three-year-old within two minutes on why you need that item, then you probably do not need that item. You probably just want it. So wants are okay. We all have wants, right? That's natural human nature. But then we go back to reason number one when having a budget. So now when you go into whether this is a want or a need and you check with your budget, it helps to validate that purchase. Rather than trying to convince yourself that you need said item, and I, I'm using it with my imaginary quotations because you don't need it, you just want it. Number four is sales, right? Buying items on sale is the biggest scam there has ever been created in the entirety of the consumer market, right? Oftentimes we think that when we're getting a sale that we're getting these items for less than they're worth, right? And that kind of sparks something in our mind, like we're getting over on someone. When in reality, the person selling the item to you is get, actually getting over on you because a lot of times in these sales, you may often spend more money than you originally intended to spend because, hey, I'm getting it for less. Look at all the value I'm getting, right? I'm getting over. And that's not true. There was an article that came out about J.C. Penney. I wish I could give you the link to that article. I will try to find it, and if I do, I'll put it down in the description below. If not, you got to Google it, but back to the point. So there was an article that came out about J.C. Penney. When J.C. Penney puts all of their items on sale or mark down prices to make people think that they're getting it at a better deal or a better value. And so J.C. Penney tried to actually make these prices the prices for the items and their sales dropped drastically like they lost millions of dollars doing this so they said whatever i'm just gonna jack up the regular price and then put the sell price what the price is actually supposed to be for example jc penny has this nice black dress they will mark this dress as 150 dollars but this dress today or this month or whatever it is is 50 percent off so now this dress is $75, right? And so you, you're like, wow, this is a really nice dress. I'm getting it for 50% off. I'm getting it for $75 when it originally cost $150. And you somehow convinced yourself that you're getting over JCPenney and getting this dress for less than it worth when JCPenney probably only spent $3 to make that dress and originally wanted to only sell the dress for $50. It was like, hey, let's make a little bit of money and mark it for $75. But hey, if I market for 75, people will say it costs too much, so let's market at 150 and just sell it at 75. So stop using sales to validate purchases. 
when you are already going to get that item or if it was an item you already wanted and then the item goes on sale is a totally different thing but if you're impulse buying because the item was on sale when you saw it it's a no-go number five is replacing items before they are finished we all do this there's always a little bit more toothpaste in the tube. There's always a little bit more soap or some shampoo. Add some little bit of water to that bottle and make it. Use it until the wheels fall off. And I say that in every resin. Now, some items like toothpaste and soap may be a little bit extreme, but the more realistic ones that we do do all the time is just think about around your home. How many half-finished water bottles are there? Or why is there multiple bags of open chips? Or why do you have two or three boxes of cereal that are all half or a quarter finished? And ways this, to do this or to help this is to open the item or whatever it was and pour it into the next one. If you do purchase the next one, if you haven't purchased it yet, scrape that thing to the bottom of the bowl. Get everything you can out of it. Trust me, it will save you a lot of money in the end because instead of buying a second or a third of that item, you may that first item may last longer than you thought it may even last you throughout the next time you go grocery shopping but just try to use these items until they're completely finished don't open another water bottle before you drink the one you have and definitely don't open another bag of chips if you haven't finished the original bag because you're not going to go back to the original because you have a nice new pretty nice one and it's nice and full and makes you feel good finish items to their completion Number six. Now, I'm going to start this one off with a question rather than a statement, but how often is money the answer to a said problem? And I'm not talking about, oh, you don't have enough money to live. I'm talking about you stubbed your toe. Is money going to help you fixing stubbing your toe? Is it going to make your toe feel better? Now, I know there's going to be jokesters out there that says, yeah, I would feel a lot better about a thousand dollars every time I stubbed my toe. But no, in reality, I'm talking about Money should not be used to fix every single problem you have. You have to get creative with how to fix these things sometimes. Just because, let's just say there was a leak on your sink, you don't always need to just jump to spend money to bring the plumber out there to see if he can fix it. Maybe just look under there and see if you just needed to turn something. Well, if you're not a plumber, you don't know anything about it, ask a friend first. See if somebody else knows. Maybe YouTube it. See how hard it is. And you can do this with anything, right? Oh, you ripped your shirt. Don't automatically just go buy a new shirt. How big is the hole in the shirt? Can you sew? Can your mom sew? Can your friend sew? Can you patch it? Can you cut the shirt and make it a crop top? You know what I'm saying? Ripped jeans. I love to turn my old pair of jeans into ripped jeans. That's the greatest thing ever invented. I learned it from a YouTuber who did fashion, and it was just like, man, like, it, it blew my mind how much sense that makes. I buy ripped jeans anyway. So why not use my old jeans that got ripped and turn them into ripped jeans and repurpose items. That's another one. Do anything you can repurpose. If you Just because you're not using it for its original purpose in the beginning, see what else it's useful for before you go and buy something to fix a problem. Right? You might already have the problem at home to fix it. Number six. Now, I'm going to start this one off with a question rather than a statement, but how often is money the answer to a said problem? And I'm not talking about, oh, you don't have enough money to live. I'm talking about you stubbed your toe. Is money gonna help you fixing stubbing your toe? Is it gonna make your toe feel better? Now, I know there's gonna be jokesters out there that says, yeah, I would feel a lot better about $1,000 every time I stubbed my toe. But no, in reality, I'm talking about money should not be used to fix every single problem you have. You have to get creative with how to fix these things sometimes. Just because Let's just say there was a leak on your sink. You don't always need to just jump to spend money to bring the plumber out there to see if he can fix it. Maybe just look under there and see if you just needed to turn something. Well, if you're not a plumber, you don't know anything about it. Ask a friend first. See if somebody else knows. Maybe YouTube it. See how hard it is. And you can do this with anything, right? Oh, you ripped your shirt. Don't automatically just go buy a new shirt. How big is the hole in the shirt? Can you sew? Can your mom sew? Can your friend sew? Can you patch it? Can you cut the shirt and make it a crop top? You know what I'm saying? Ripped jeans. 
I love to turn my old pair of jeans into ripped jeans. That's the greatest thing ever invented. I learned it from a YouTuber who did fashion, and it was just like, man, like it, it blew my mind how much sense that makes. I buy ripped jeans anyway, so why not use my old jeans that got ripped and turn them into ripped jeans? And repurpose items. That's another one. Do anything you can repurpose. If you just because you're not using it for its original purpose in the beginning, see what else it's useful for before you go and buy something to fix a problem, right? You might already have the problem at home to fix it. Number seven, paying the minimum on your credit card or your consumer debt. This is a huge no-go and it is the biggest reason why you don't feel like you have enough money at the end of the month. Because what happens is, because you pay the minimums on these things, on these items, they take even longer to pay off and they stay over your head. And debt is a huge problem in America right now. I think we have like $3 trillion in consumer debt or something like that. Maybe somebody can fact check me. Comment down below if you know the actual number. Fact check me on that. But consumer debt, consumer debt, consumer debt. And I said it three times with point of emphasis is the devil, right? Borrowing money for some type of fun purchase or some type of feel good purchase is not never a good idea. Now we're not talking about debt because you went to college or debt because you own a home or something like that, some type of investment possibly, because I guess going to college and having student loans is an investment in yourself essentially. Still wanna pay those off, but credit cards, uh, the debt you owe to the furniture store, to that car note, all of those things are not necessary. And it was a lie that was told to you since you were young that if you get good credit, you can have the things that you want. No. If you save money, then you can buy the things that you want. Do not use other people's money to buy things that you want. We don't use other people's money to buy you want. So pay those things off, right? Dave Ramsey has the snowball method. It's paying the smallest debt while paying all the minimums for the rest put extra money towards the smallest debt and then roll that into each debt until you pay it all off. That's a good method. I'm gonna have a video release later on on how to pay off debt and why to get out of debt. But for now, stop paying the minimums on everything. Target a loan, target a credit card, and get rid of it. Pay it off. Number eight, pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. That is important, right? And when I say that, I mean save some money and do it first. Paying yourself should be the first bill that you pay every single month, every single pay period, every single week, every time you get a dollar. Every time you get a dollar, 10 cents should go to a savings account and it should be automatic. Now, savings account needs to be something that you do not look at every day, that you cannot see, and that you cannot access to within a second, right? Because the worst thing ever is to save for six months just to see something you like and then go grab all that money you just saved for six months just to get that purchase. No, we've already talked about living in our budget, not buying things because it's a want or every time we want it, not buying things because they're on sale, but not validating purchases saying that you need them rather than you want them. So if you do those things, you should not have to touch your savings account. So 10%, right? That's what the Greater Financial Universe says. 10% of every dollar you make should go to a savings account and you should not look at it. We will, on this channel, be making a video later on on what to do with that 10% that you are saving. But for now, we're gonna take the biggest step and we're gonna save that 10%. Okay, so number nine. We're gonna talk about a little bit of offense today, right? Because whenever anyone talks about saving, it's always defense, 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 right? How to cut your costs, how not to spend money, how to not buy sell items is what I talked about today. But let's talk about some offense. And offense is make more money. So find a side hustle, right? And I know nobody wants to go get another job. You probably already work 40 plus hours, whatever. Find a way that you can maybe find something you're good at, find something you like, find a hobby and see how you can monetize it. Sell things around the house. See if you can get maybe a, cu a couple extra hours of overtime. Whatever it is, making more money will always increase your savings power because you can't save $1,000 if you don't make $1,000, right? And yes, you can do it over time, but you get the point that I'm trying to make. So offense, that is totally a part of saving. Find a way to side also. Number 10, and I saved it for last for a reason because this may be the most important way to increase your savings. 
and it is delaying gratification. Anytime you want to purchase something, give yourself 24 to 48 hours to think over whether it needs to be purchased. And when I'm talking about purchasing things, I'm not talking about little small items. I get it. You may need to run to the store to get something. I'm talking about large purchases, 40 to $50 or more, right? We need to talk about whether or not do you need this item? How bad do you want this item? Is this item within the budget? Is this item worth getting? Can you afford this item? And delaying gratification is the best way to do it, right? And so, for example, when you go to the store to buy a gun, some of us may not believe in buying guns, but for those who do, when you go to the store to purchase a gun, say if you purchase it from Walmart, oftentimes you cannot pick up the gun the same day. They make you wait 24 hours. And the reason is because if you went in with a certain mindset when you, to buy that gun, they want to give you 24 hours to go back and think about it, whether you were still going to do that or not. And so you need to do this with these purchases. Do we need these things 24 hours from now? Is my want for this thing still going to be the same 48 hours from now? Delaying gratification is the main reason that 99% of millionaires and billionaires became millionaires and billionaires. Now, they might have had a little bit of help and some luck along the way, but delaying gratification was a part of all their stories. It's the largest common denominator between everyone out there who has a large sum of money. And as a tradition that I'm getting started on this channel, for a bonus for making it to the end of this video, I'm going to give you either a quote or some food for thought. And so th today is a quote. And the quote is, you can buy anything you want as long as you buy the assets to pay for them first. Now, I wish I could give you who said that. I can't think of the person's name right now at the time of this recording. I did a little Google and I couldn't find it. So if you can find out who said that, leave that down in the comments below. Also, if you don't really understand or can't really interpret what that means, comment down what you think it means below. I will like the best ones. And I will, after 100 likes on this video, comment down exactly what that means and put it in layman's terms. So, for now, keep flexing those fitness muscles and be on the lookout for my financial boot camp. Those videos should be coming out soon if they're not already out by the time you're watching this video. But 